Today we're going to learn how to determine the amount of excess reactant remaining at the end of a reaction. To do this, we're going to use the same reaction we had yesterday where you combine hydrogen and oxygen to produce water. Here we have the same reaction we had yesterday where you have two moles of hydrogen combined with one mole of oxygen to produce two moles of water. Please notice that this should be an arrow right here, meaning producing water. Uh, we're going to use the same reaction, so if you have this handy, your notes from yesterday, we're just going to basically add on to the notes we, we took yesterday. You also note in this reaction that we, uh, when we change uh, the mole, when we look at the mole ratio, we want to think of the mole ratio as counting atoms or molecules. Um, in the boxes, we see a small number of particles. In actuality, that never really happens because we, there's trillions and trillions of molecules that's ha that react, and that's why we actually weigh them in grams. And if we were to actually put, draw the, the number of particles in grams that were reacting, we would basically be drawing particles all day. But the drawing uh, gives us a simplified version and a nice view of what actually is happening. In the reaction, you see that there's two moles of hydrogen that combine with one mole of oxygen to produce two moles of water. And we can do any proportion of that. As if the, if, and if we do that, there'll be no excess, there'll be, only, there'll be no excess reactant. For example, if we double it, we'd have four moles of hydrogen and uh, two moles of oxygen produces four moles of water. Now you see here that in the drawing, they actually tripled that. They did six molecules of hydrogen combined with three molecules of oxygen to produce six molecules of water. That's all nice because in here we see the perfect ratios, but in actuality that very rarely occurs. So we see here this, the two to one to two ratio is awesome, but unfortunately that very rarely occurs. So what we're going to, so since that rarely occurs, it's very important that chemists and chemistry students understand the difference between excess and limiting reactants. We're going to use the same problem we had yesterday, where we had 24 grams of oxygen combined with 5 grams of hydrogen. Now notice the 24 is a much bigger number than the oxygen, but we know hydrogen weighs much less. Oxygen only has a mass, has a mass of 32 grams per mole. Hydrogen is only two grams per mole. And once again, remember this arrow should be there where the box is. Um, so to determine the mass, this is what we did yesterday, of water produced, we simply do two calculations, and the smallest amount is the amount that is actually produced. You've already taken notes on this calculation. Just remember that we start with 24 grams of oxygen. This is what we did yesterday. And when we said there's a mass of 32 grams of O2 in one mole of O2, we always use one mole. The only time we use a number other than one is the next step, where we're going to go from moles of one substance to moles of another. Now in the balanced reaction, we see there's one mole of oxygen per two moles of hydrogen. So this step right here is the only time you'll use a mole ratio other than one to one, or other, uh, a mole number other than one to one. Um, when you're going from one substance to another, you use the numbers from the balanced equation. You don't in any, any other step. Then the final step is just change gram, moles of hydrogen to grams. So we'll say one mole of hydrogen has a mass of two grams of hydrogen. Now notice when we do this, what's nice about this is things cancel out very well for us. So we can go through and cancel out grams of hydrogen, moles of oxygen, moles of hydrogen then our final answer is going to be the 27 grams of water. This is simply a review from yesterday, but hopefully you remember it. The next step, you do the same process with hydrogen, and then you found out that you had 27 grams of water from oxygen, 45 grams of water from hydrogen. This was a smaller amount, so that was the amount that was actually produced. This is what we call the theoretical yield. Uh, theoretical yield, we calculate using math. It's not done in the lab. We did a math problem in the periodic table to determine that. Once again, still review from yesterday. So this tells us that O2 is a limiting reactant, and it determines the amount of product that's produced, and it also determines...
the, apologize for the handwriting, a mount, sorry, a mount of reactant. used. And that's what we're going to learn today is how to use this limiting, which is the oxygen, to determine how much of the hydrogen was used. We see hydrogen here is excess, so we want to figure out how much of that was used. So the question here we're trying to answer is how much hydrogen gas would be left over at the end of the reaction? So to do that, uh, you first determine how much hydrogen reacts with all the oxygen doing a gram-to-gram -gram problem, you start with the 24 grams of oxygen, the limiting reactant, and you convert it to grams of hydrogen, the excess reactant. This will tell us how much hydrogen was actually used in the reaction. So to do this, we start with the limiting reactant, which is the 24 grams of oxygen. I'll, I'll turn to write this here, so we'll say 24 grams of O2. And we want to convert that. To, we've already got the balanced equation, so the next step is to change grams of given to moles. We'll do that. We'll say uh, there's 32 grams of O2 and one mole of O2. And now we have moles of O2. We want to change this to moles of hydrogen, the other reactant. So we say from the balanced equation, there's one mole of O2 per two moles of H2. And now we want to change moles of hydrogen to grams. One more step. We say there's one mole of H2 and that has a mass of 2.0 grams of H2. What's nice about doing this is everything cancels out. So we can just go back and we can say, look at what we did, and we can say grams of hydrogen cancel, uh, grams of oxygen cancel, moles of oxygen cancel, and I'd like to point out here again, important point, remember we've got a two to one ratio here. The only time you use a ratio from the balanced equation is when you're going from moles of one substance, oxygen, to moles of another substance, hydrogen. And so now we have moles of hydrogen and change that to grams. And we do all this and we end up with 3.0 grams of hydrogen. This is the amount of hydrogen that was reacted. Reacted means it was used. So this is not our final answer. That just tells us how much we use. So we have one more step. Our final step is to take the grams of hydrogen, which we started with. So we can say we started, we had 5.0 grams of H2, and this was at the beginning, and subtract the 3.0 grams of H2 that reacted, and that has 2.0 grams H2 remaining. So let's just review that again. We've got the 5 grams, and this is at the beginning. And then this is 3 grams that were used. And then we have 2 grams that are left over. And this is how, using a gram-to-gram -gram problem, you figure out the amount of excess reactant that remained at the end of any reaction. Good luck.